This is a book I just published in Singapore about corporate social responsibility in China, and it is a result of a research project of the last 10 years. I wrote this book about corporate social responsibility in China uh, from a more general concern, actually. There are many years I'm interested by the following topics. What are the cultural resources from which to build up a culture of sustainability in China? I met this problem first when I was working with ethnic minorities in Southwest China, and I saw micro-societies that basically changed a lot because young people went to work in metropolises, uh, went into big companies, and the experiences were bad and good and so on. And I did realize that besides the states and civil society, if you wanted to understand the way China would be evolving, and the challenges association with development, you had to concentrate on corporate culture itself. So corporate culture is something to be investigated. We have to look at the resources through which entrepreneurs understand their mission, develop their ethos, uh, justify their practices or change their practices, the way also employees relate to their organization, and the way companies link up with the states and with civil society. So it seems to me that for understanding the role of uh, Chinese developmental logic, you have to work on those three levels, the state, corporations, and civil society. Though from this perspective, I put a special focus on corporate social responsibility, not only as a legal and technical issues, but also as a cultural one. Basically, how would entrepreneurs understand and justify what they would do? So, of course, on the one hand, I do see the shortcomings of corporate responsibility in China. Indeed, there is a lot of scandals. Corruption itself is a limitation to the possibility of going towards more transparency and accrued responsibilities and so on. We are all aware of the problems, and they are in the Chinese press and Chinese social medias every day. But on the other hand, since at least 1995, the issue, the topic has been on the table. There has been gallops of Chinese entrepreneurs since that time, and there has been a whole literature, debates, training sessions, and so on and so on, competitions also, that have been organized by the Ministry of Commerce, by Chambers of Commerce, by international organizations, by some professional associations, and so on and so on. So I'm trying to see how the topic has been evolving, especially, let's say, since 2005 when China has its, I would say, organic corporate law, the law that organizes the status of corporations in China, and that explicitly mentioned already in its first article, the social responsibility of companies. This book is divided into three parts. Mm. The first part is about vision, which means what do we understand when we speak of corporate social responsibility, and I show that the concept evolves a lot in space and time, which actually is a natural process. It's good to have an open definition. The legal framework that China is developing very quickly on that issue, the cultural and social resources that build up responsible behaviors, and the limitation. Okay. The second part is about an assessment, which means that I take corporate social responsibility, CSR, by dimensions, uh, ecological responsibility, uh, safety, safety of production process and safety of products themselves, uh, social issues, which means health coverage and that kind of things, um, engineering ethics, uh, management of conflicts, problem of uh, 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 suffering at work, or, for instance, equality among men and women, and so on and so on. So, all the dimensions that compose CSR showing, of course, that those dimensions are interconnected. We often don't think about that, but a company, for instance, that doesn't respect equality between men and women may have more safety issues because there is a deteriorating atmosphere within the uh, society, within the company. There is uh, 
hidden conflicts or uh, personal responsibility or the capacity of everyone are not recognized, though all the issues are combined together. And the third part of the book is a blueprint, which means through which channels, especially through which kind of ethical assessment, so which kind of reporting, foundations, and so on and so on, can companies effectively make CSR a part of their uh, global strategy. Within that context, of course, I develop special cases. So I use cases of real companies that may be good or bad, uh, that uh, have uh, been noted for what happens. Also, I examine especially the biggest Chinese companies, the one which want to enter the international market, for instance, China Mobile or Suning are keen not only to establish a sound reputation, but also to be able, maybe later on, to buy up other companies on the international market. And they know how sensitive it is uh, in other countries to have China companies trying to buy up part of, uh, let's say, a, a, a country's uh, most well-known companies, for instance, telecom companies. Though they have to build up a record on that kind of issue. But it has a ripple effect in China because, of course, those companies are very important in the world supply chain and though the requirements they put forward do influence smaller companies in China.